Hey guys! So today we have a story of a very intimidating boy. Big boy. But I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed reading it. It was really fun to read. I really liked the way the player portrayed this character. So like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you at the end of the video. This was a wrap up for a module we were playing. But I had fun the whole way. I played Crawd, the half-orc rogue, with a flail. Because in Pathfinder, just about any weapon can get sneak attack damage. Crawd is over 7 feet tall and speaks in the third person whenever he thinks someone is watching. Said to the paladin, Crawd suggests you look the other way while he's shopping. He wasn't dumb, but people never expect the idiot to be running a crime ring. Crawd was a good stealthy guy, but he shined in intimidation. Plus 13 at level 3. Oh, Fuck, God, that's, that's high. This made for great moments as the game went on. The first time he was sneaking around, I fumbled his stealth roll. I looked at the GM. Crawd rears up and screams at the top of his lungs. You see no Crawd! I critted the roll. According to the GM, I stunned all the goblins there except for one, who immediately went back to doing what he was doing previously, and desperately tried to pretend I was not there. That was Crawd. One of his quotes was, Only two things see Crawd. Dead things, and things that know better than to admit it. So at the end of the module, my group is breaking up a local cult and we get caught in the middle of the leadership while trying to steal incriminating documents. So we fight and against all odds defeat the leadership and their mask golem. It helped when Crawd kneecapped it with a sneak attack with his two-handed flail. Crawd's standing over the cult leader and the guy gave his big bad evil guy last words. Big bad evil guy. I should have known you were unbelievers from the start. Crawd. Meh. Crawd always considers himself militant agnostic. Crawd not really know what to believe. Hef's flail. And he is very frustrated with that. Crunch. Good old Crawd. Oh, Crawd had a lot of fun in a short set of campaigns. At one point, Crawd is hanging with his grip as we travel by river. When the GM notes we are passing another boat, he asks us where we were. I said Crawd was in the crow's nest. GM. The boat's too small, there is no crow's nest. Me. He built one. GM. He can't build a crow's nest. Me. I haven't chosen a craft skill yet. Crawd is carpenter in free time. He enjoy working with hands in ways that doesn't require him to put down tarp. GM. Ugh, you have no tools. Me. Crawd glares at some spare planks and they know better than to not be a crow's nest. I roll to intimidate the wood. GM. Roll it. Crawd now has the craft skill. Angry carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> that's quality. That's, uh, that's too good. No, too. Still, one of my favourite moments was when I had to ad-lib a distraction. The group had infiltrated the earlier mentioned cult and were being processed. Our mage wanted to sneak off to check some enchantment or another and I volunteered to keep their attention. The GM smirks and says, Okay, what do you do? Me. Crawd tells an entertaining story to distract the acolytes. GM. Okay, tell me a story. No rule. Tell me a story. Challenge accepted. Me. Okay. Crawd gets them talking about themselves and eventually says, Crawd had lots of jobs before coming here. Bouncer, bodyguard, gigolo. City guard, gigolo. GM. <laughs> gigolo. <laughs> Me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Crawd was kept man for noble lady. She get off on Crawd not being fancy. Crawd had to quit though. GM. One of the acolytes says, Why did you quit? Me. Fancy pants sutter get mad at Crawd for taking his women. Challenge Crawd to duel. Then Crawd kill him. GM. And she kicked you out? Me. No. Noble lady get off on that too. Police get real mad though. GM. But duels are legal? Me. Yes. But only if you kill man during duel. GM, you killed him outside of the jail? Me. Fancy Pants tells Crawd to choose weapon. Crawd chooses surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pop <pocket sandwich. laughs> The group has collected some incriminating evidence and returned into town. They've spent the last two weeks going through cult boot camp and now they're in a bar. While the leader finds the police chief, we order food and Crawd finds a wench and proceeds to woo her in the third person. One of our group, a cat girl type thing. Why is there always a cat girl? There's always a cat girl. Cat girls? Yeah, cat girls <laughs> essentially. 
A cat girl type thing is approached by a waitress who proceeds to pull from her sleeve a live rat, much to the joy of the cat girl. Cat girl. I love the service here. Me. Crowd respect service, but worry for kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I know the, feeling. the leader comes back and tells us we need more evidence. We have to sneak back into the cult compound before we are found missing. The group isn't thrilled, especially Crod. Me. Lip quiver. But, but Crod have wench. Crod cannot leave wench. Leader. You got 20 minutes. Me. Crod looks offended. Crod many things. But Crod gentlemen, he need more time than that. Leader. You've got 20 minutes. Me. Crawd rolls to intimidate the time space cont- <laughs> GM, no he doesn't. <laughs> Cat girl, you could roll to intimidate her to finish quicker. Me. Crawd never bring work to bedroom. He treat wench like the beautiful flower she is when Crawd beds her. GM, she thanks you for that. Me. Shut up, wench. Crawd talking. <laughs> Later. Uh, 40 minutes. Me. Crawd rolls for acrobatics. <laughs> GM, like hell. Me, boom, natural 20. GM, god damn it. Crawd had a merry time at the cult. The first time Crawd talks out of line, the GM says, Your instructor bops you in the head, saying, No talking. Me, Crawd very slowly turns and glares a hole in the man. Bop, Crawd, again. I roll intimidation. 19 plus 13 equals 32 for intimidation. Jesus fuck. Crawd is level 3 at the time. GM, he never makes eye contact with you again. Ah, but Crawd was not always so lucky. At one point, he's elected to map out the compound and sneak to the top floor in disguise. He gets up the stairs and a pair of magic doors stop him. GM, the doors are 12 feet high and engraved with scenes of decadence in many forms, from orgies to feasts. Me, Crawd is struggling to remember why he is against this holy place. Problem. Crod kind of forgot to put a lot of points in picklock. He's average at best, and he rolls shit. Oh, I whistled. Shit! He gets frustrated after getting hit with an ice blast twice in the face. Me. Stupid enchanted portway. Why you taunt Crod? GM. The silver doors do not reply. Me. Wait, their doors are made of silver? Cut girl. They're silver plated, right? GM. The module just says silver. Oh, Jesus, they're getting fucking stolen. They're getting fucking stolen, I can tell you that next time. <laughs> Me. Okay. Crawd rolls to pocket the doors. GM, no. Me. I'm not leaving without these. GM, how are you going to hide 12 foot doors? Me. Crawd's wearing robes and he has skills for holdout or whatever. GM, no. Me. Crawd rolls angry carpenter on the doors. <laughs> GM. They're made of silver. Angry Carpenter only intimidates wood. Me. Damn, that's true. Well, I can't get them open. We'll settle this later. So, Crawd leaves dejected, but not beaten. Multiple sessions later, we clear out the leadership of the cult and the group knows we're done. The GM is moving and this is a nice stopping point. As we're cleaning up the bodies, I remember those accursed doors. Me. Hey, wizard, I need your help. Help disenchant the doors. We're stealing these. GM. You won't let this go, will you? (laughs) Me. No. Crawd never leave job half done. Wench is half loved. Or stuff half stolen. It matter of pride at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Cat girl. And gambling debts. Me. Crawd nods. That too. (laughs) GM. Fine. But you get those doors on a natural 20. And you get them past the guards in town on the same. You know... I don't recall the name of the class that gives himself and teammates luck bonuses, but with his help and a poorly worded module, well, Crod retired a happy orc. And that's the story of good old Crod. That was pretty good. I really liked that one. I really liked I, it. I, I, I love the concept of just like shouting at the fucking wind and be like, fucking work. You're going to fucking be this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just get it now, would you? You know, uh, that's oh, I love that. I love intimidate, honestly. Yeah. I use it quite a bit in my games. Um, it's only because you're playing big bars. Yeah, I'm playing big bars at the minute. He's a uh, Goliath. 
um, fighter, and it's one of those ones. If he, he he likes to sing his song of you know you know the you know the video. I conquered all the chippies. <laughs> I don't know if I can um, put uh, at the fucking lot. <laughs> yeah, that's his like theme. Chips and peas and gravy. gravy. <laughs> yeah, he chants that as he marches into battle. So he does. <laughs> I think it's quality, but uh, no, I use intimidate a lot, and it's a lot of fun. I I think it's one of my favorite uh, skills to use anyway. But uh, if you guys have any good, like you know, stories about using intimidate, let us know definitely down below. I think it'll be pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and if we get enough stories, we can make a video out of it, which would be, I think, would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, look. As always, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, like, subscribe, all that other good shit, and um, check out models. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. All done.